a beginner or a young person, I'm not exactly sure the birth date, but he, was been, he had been drawing beautifully for over 30 years, Michelangelo, and this is something that you can study uh, in order to study the structures within the um, shoulder girdle. And I'm going to just pass this one around so you can see it. And it's complicated. It's not exact in terms of the bones and muscles, but you get an idea of the uh, forms that come over and over again in the shoulder girdle. And those forms are bony and muscular. Um, I like to present the uh, sternum as being a positive force with the two origins of sternocleidomastoid, but in this particular case, he's got the two clavicular ends that meet the sternum as being the dominant forms, and you don't get much of the sternum except for a lightness in the... Um, the sternum is here. The clavicles are the two struts that leave, that articulate with the sternum in the first rib, and begin the upper extremity or the uh, arm. The arm begins with the shoulder girdle, um, the clavicle touching the axial skeleton at the sternum. And we don't see the sternum, we just see the two heads of the clavicles. Fair enough. Fair enough in this case because the head is hardly involved at all in this uh, description. And then each clavicle sort of swims out, wings out, gets out to the edge uh, of the shoulder to meet the acromion process as the shoulder is turning away. So in, I'm not sure exactly what is what in all of this, but we see um, from the outside, we can try to guess the acromion process by a little straight line that would represent that part of your acromion process that's very sharp as it turns around and comes to the front to meet the clavicle. So if you feel right on your edge, there's a sharp bony form, and that would be right here. And then it would be flat seeming because the bone is um, a point of origin and insertion on both sides, but the flatness of the, uh, the bone is apparent uh, where it's still bone and there's no muscle. So I'm assuming that this comes along to meet the clavicle, and I'm not sure if he meant this rounded form to be this, the clavicle, but I think he did. And then there's the deltoids form coming along, and right after the cork, uh, the acromion process, the deltoid moves out, um, somewhat describing the humerus, or the bone of the arm, the upper arm bone, which is um, making, um, a, a little bit of an outside form, but the deltoid muscle is large enough to become a muscular form that he's defined by pulling the dark down this way. Now, all of these forms are described through dark and light in a way that uh, is very traditional chiaroscuro, uh, and he's got the bones, the muscles, and the shadows all cooperating to make space and form. So we're <coughs> moving back and forth from um, hard tissues, soft tissues, and light falling on planes that face us or don't play, face us. The wonderful thing of this clavicle moving over is that when the trapezius comes along, and here's the trapezius, I'm gonna do dotted lines here and here to this one, to that clavicle and acromion process. When this one comes along, the darkness at the, uh, what they call the posterior triangle, or the spot where there's no muscle between sternocleidomastoid and trapezius, that's um, defined by a darkness which kind of scoops out the space. So if you look at this carefully, and of course the best thing to do is to um, copy it. I'm gonna to try to copy it a little bit better. The scooped out space is towards the edge, and then he has a very clear line defining the top of the clavicle. So when you copy a drawing like this by Michelangelo, you are, in a sense, being him or repeating what he did or saying, speaking his words, his visual words or his visual sentences. And the underside here becomes stronger at the point um, 
not at the same point quite, but, and I couldn't figure this one out either. I think this is the ligament um, on the underside, the ligament to the coracoid right here. So we have undulating forms, we have ligaments, uh, or, uh, connected tissue between bones ex expressing themselves too. You know, we've been studying the um, shoulder girdle and pointing out the coracoid process. So if you put your fingers, poke your fingers in here, where the point where it hurts is where your coracoid bone is. That's right towards the outside. Uh, if you move your arm around, there's a depression in there, and that's your coracoid. It's time, right? Did it not read me? It only read. You have to tell me. Okay. Can you say something like that?